Hi hey everyone, I'm Rob Flattery from the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design, also known as RIMCAD. Today we're going to talk about using Lightroom to make your photo pop and be professional like this. This fun tutorial is being made on our Wondering Pixel. This workshop on wheels is dedicated to inspiring young creatives through art and design by scheduling visits to schools and events. In this series of online workshops, the Pixel shows artists just like you the fun, simple way of creating compelling content. So come on in. What's up everyone? We're here today with Jim Ryman, our Chair of Photo and Graphic Design, and he's going to show you how to use Lightroom to show you the simple behind the scenes tricks to take your photos and make them look professional. So here we have Adobe Lightroom, and this is the general interface when you first open it up. And what we need to do is we need to import our files. The way that Lightroom works is the catalog lives on your machine and then your images are located wherever you decide to place them. Just a quick tip, if you keep your catalog on your machine, it will run faster. However, if you need to go to multiple machines, you may need to keep that catalog on a hard drive as well. So let's go ahead and import our photos. So I'm going to go up to uh, File and Import Photos. I could also hit this little button right here, which I'll just go ahead and do that. There's a quick button right here. In here, this is our, our import screen. And what you can do is you can grab your photos. So I have a folder here of images shot here at the RIMCAD campus. And you get a few different options. You can add, which is what we're going to do. We're just going to add them from where they already are. You can move them from somewhere on your computer. And once you go into these move, copy, copy as DNG, you'll notice that a lot more options come up over here. That's because over here on this side of the screen is where your images live. Here are your images, and here is where they're going. And so if you move them, it'll actually move them from one place to the next. If you copy them, they will copy them from the next. And I should maybe mention, when you move, they will leave the place that they were and now exist in that particular location. When you copy, it'll make a duplicate from your memory card or whatever um, to your hard drive. And then if you copy in as DNG, that copies it in as Adobe's proprietary RAW file. So I'm just going to add today. So I don't really need to do any of this over here. I'm going to add our photos. I'm going to go to import. And what's going to happen is all of my photos are going to import into the catalog. The files are still located wherever that they were before. And that was a folder that I called RIMCAD Campus. And you can see that's now showing up in my folders over here. So this is our library module. And if you look across the top right here, you have your library. You have develop, map, book, slideshow, print, and web. And this is really important because each of these modules have a different functionality. So the library module is where you typically start out. And the, this module allows you to sort your images. So um, what I can do here is I can jump into my film strip mode uh, down here at the bottom, and I can start cycling through the images. And what I like to do is I like to use a numbering system. So, you know, maybe I go through and I kind of like an image. You know, I go through an image, the images a couple times. I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I like that one. So I'm going to mark that as a three. Maybe I go back here. You know, I'll mark that as a three, two. That means that I, of these three images that are kind of similar, those are the two that I like the most. I'll come back and I'll sort them a little bit more later. Here I have a couple that are pretty similar. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and choose this one. And then I can just kind of go through and rank my photos. And what's nice about this is if you rank your photo photos and you have a, a system in place, then what you can do is you can turn on your filters, which are located down here at the bottom. And you can say that you only want to see your rated files. And you can see that all of the other files have been removed from here. So, you know, it takes some time to develop a system. You can say that you only want to see three star images. You know what, let me move this one to two. So you can see as soon as I move that to two stars by pressing the two key, uh, my, uh, my uh, file dropped from my film strip down here. But now I've put it to two and you can see it's come back. So you can use that to help rank as well. There's a lot of different ways that you can cull your photos and everybody has their own sort of process that they use. 
but I, I personally prefer the star system. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all of my filters for right now, so then I get all of my images back. Now, uh, so this is the library module. Basically, it's, its purpose is calling photos, ranking them, sorting them. You can add keywords. You can do all kinds of things, edit the metadata. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the develop module. And the develop module is where you actually process your photos. So this is, when I talk about processing your photos, that's where actually making adjustments to the photos themselves. So there's, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, you can do them as individuals or as batch photos. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to just show you a couple things. Over on the left, you have your navigator. And that's where you can actually see your image. And you can also zoom into your images too. So let's say I wanna zoom in here. You'll notice that over here in my navigator, you can see that it's uh, now one to one. That means 100 pixels. So I'm gonna jump into 300% and you can see I'm really kind of getting in much tighter on the water tower here. If I go to fill, that fills the screen but it doesn't fit the image to the screen. It basically fills all of the space here. So I'm gonna jump back to fit and there I can see the whole photo again. Just underneath the fit, these are your presets and these are the default presets that come with Lightroom. And just so you can see what's in here, I'll open up the creative. And these are basically different types of effects that you could apply to your image. Basically uh, a filter set of adjustments. And actually I kind of like the warm shadows on this particular image. But just by hovering over it, you can preview what that looks like. I'm not clicking anything. I'm just hovering over the top of the presets. And you can see they're all in little drop downs. Here's our color presets. Here's our black and white. And you can see these, there's a lot of different versions. There's the black and white landscape, there's high contrast. Punch is just a higher contrast. There's low contrast, which is a little flatter. Here's a much flatter. Uh, soft has a little bit of um, negative clarity built in so the, the tones blend together a little bit more. Uh, infrared acts like, uh, like an infrared film. But there's all kinds of things that come with Lightroom by default. You can also create your own presets and you, there's all kinds of companies that purchase presets as well. So I'll go ahead and close this. Oh, here's a tip. I like to operate in solo mode and to access solo mode, you just control click on your, um, on your menus underneath your navigator or over in your develop modules, which we'll do that too. So what solo mode does is it will close, like when you go to open, a, and you can see I have no snapshot, so it's not really showing anything right now. Basically what it does, is I'll do it over here to our develop settings. I'll go in here, go to solo mode. And what it does is if I click on one, it closes the other. And it just makes the interface a little bit cleaner. Uh, rather than if I leave it on, I'll show you what can happen. And now I have all, so I didn't open all of them, but I have all of these ones here. Some people like to open just the ones that they use. Other people, uh, like myself, I like to be in solo mode and I only want the one that I'm using open. So, all right, let's take a look at what else we have here. Uh, in our develop module, we also have our histogram and this is hugely important to processing your images. Over here to your left is where your shadows are and to your right are where your highlights are. So this is your whites, so I can reduce the whites in my image by actually clicking on the histogram and pulling that information over if I wanted to dim down the highlights. And if I wanted to either lighten the shadows or darken the shadows, I can move that. That just sets my black and my white point. Here is actually my shadow detail, so I can kind of shift this around as well, and you can see that the other side of the histogram is kind of staying put, but this information closest to the shadows is shifting a little bit. The, the center area, this is my overall exposure, so I can swish this information back and forth. And so that's basically, I like to describe that as like, imagine all of your shadows, uh, your blacks, your shadows, your midtones, highlights and whites, they're like liquid and you're, they're inside of a bottle and you're kind of swishing this information back and forth. So uh, that's kind of like, by moving it this way, I'm making it a much more high key image. If I move it this way, it's a much more low key image. So um, you can adjust this. This section right here 
uh, is where your cropping exists. It's where your, all of your local area adjustments get into, but we'll save those for another video. And then from here down, this is all of your global area adjustments. So a global area adjustment is what all of these things are here, and they affect the entire image. They're a global adjustment, meaning they, they apply to everything that you're doing. So let's pick uh, some images from campus here. You know, we have these really cool manhole covers on campus and I, I took some pictures of some of them earlier today. Let's say uh, we're gonna play with this adjustment, or with this image here. So, typically you start out in your basic mode, and your basic mode is where you determine your treatment, your profile, and then this is where you do your white balance, this is managing your exposure, and then these are fine-tuning your presence, which is basically uh, things that have to do with color and luminance. So let's start up here. Uh, treatment. Do I want a color image or do I want a black and white image? And what you can do is you can click either color or black and white. So it's already in color, so let's see what it looks like in black and white. And that's kind of interesting. Maybe the color is not that important in this particular image. Uh, but let's jump back to it here. Let's say that we like it in color. Now we have our opportunity to mess with our um, profile. So in here, there are uh, there's a little drop down menu and there are all of these different profiles and there are some black and white ones and there are some color ones and if you want to explore them uh, you can kind of get a preview here some of them lean rather purple some of them a little bit warmer uh, some of them a little cooler this is actually um, uh, an, it emphasizes uh, oranges and blues which you see a lot in like cinematic edits and color grading your modern effects are gonna have a little bit more like contrast and flatness, but you can kind of just hover over these and see what you like, and it'll get you a base point of where to go. Maybe we wanna do something vintage, I don't know, let's check it out. So you can see they're a little softer. I think what I'm gonna do though is I'm just gonna go with a, the actual color, but I might, uh, I might go in here and pick my, let's just do the landscape one. And I, I like that because it's got just a little, little, a little uh, punch in the shadows there. So I'm gonna click that one. And then when I'm done, I'm just gonna close this. And now I have this, have the, the profile applied, the Adobe landscape profile. So next, I can choose my color temperature or my white balance. And you'll see that there's a temperature slider from cool to warm. So by adjusting this, I can warm or cool down the image. I also have this little eyedropper here. And the eyedropper is nice because if you have something that's supposed to be neutral, you can click on that and it'll automatically take out the color cast. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but let me really mess this up. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna hover over the sidewalk here, which is pretty neutral. And you can see in my navigator what it would look like wherever I click. So if I click on the shadows, they're a little cooler, so it kind of neutralizes that, makes it warmer. But I'm gonna to try to grab something that's kind of in the middle there. So now I'm kind of back to where I started in terms of my color. Um, with any of these sliders, all you have to do is just double click them and it'll reset them back to default. So um, just double click the sliders and it'll set it to wherever. Um, next, this, uh, this area here is your exposure and your contrast, but also your shadows and highlights. I've already shown you how you can use your histogram to manipulate that. Uh, but you can also adjust these to get a little bit more. You're like you can spread out this information and make the exposure lighter or darker. And then you, know, you can adjust these as you see fit. The presence is where you can ad do micro contrast adjustments with your clarity. And sometimes if you have a black and white image, you want to punch up this clarity a little bit. But if you're working on a portrait of somebody, you may not want that. And what that does is it just darkens the color values that are closest to highlights and it lifts up those, those highlights that are close to the shadows. And it creates a, a sort of micro contrast effect. If you go the other way, it blends those colors into one another and it starts looking a little hazy. So maybe we want to do something like that for this image. The dehaze is something that you would use if you uh, maybe had like a foggy lens or something like that, or it was a little smoky, you could try to, try to 
pull some of the detail out of that haze. You can use it on images that don't have that, and you can see in here this is making this really punchy looking. Maybe a little bit more so than I like, so I'm going to double click it and set it back to zero. And then over here, you, this, these, the last two sliders have to do with color, where these are luminance, so vibrance. Basically what vibrance does is it's a form of saturation that only affects the colors that are, are less saturated. So as I pull this up, you can see it kind of hitting the blues and purples a little bit more so than other tones present. And if I pull this down, there's still a little bit of orange present in here as I pull it down, but that's because the, the orange colors, oranges, reds, they tend to be less affected by vibrance. And then saturation saturates everything uh, evenly and it, it really punches up the colors. All right, so now that I've adjusted the basic, this is where uh, you typically want to start. After this, things get a little bit more selective, and there's a little, you just click on this and you can open it up. You may not need all of these adjustments, and you know sometimes I only use a certain set, um, but there is a tone curve adjustment, so you can adjust your highlights and shadows, and you can see it's showing me, as I move this up and down, which area on my histogram is being affected by it. Um, a lot of times I like to do a very subtle S curve and that just gives you a nice little, just a nice little hint of contrast. You can also switch this to uh, the uh, linear and then you can actually click wherever you like and adjust this. There's all kinds of other stuff in here and I'll just kind of introduce you to each one of them. HSL is where you can adjust individual colors, so you can change the colors in the hue mode, you can add saturation, and you can target a very specific area of color. So I know we've got a lot of blues in this image, so maybe what I want to do is target those blues. And actually, the best way to adjust an area is to grab this little, this little wheel here. This is our targeted adjustment slider. So here's the hue. Here's your saturation, your luminance, so that's what HL sta HSL stands for. So I'm gonna say, let's adjust the saturation. Now I can adjust individual colors if I know which ones are present in the image. However, it's often a lot easier to grab this targeted adjustment tool here and then move out to an area that you want to affect. And so maybe I wanna lift the saturation in this area here, or maybe I wanna lower it. Um, I can adjust it. Maybe I don't really like the way this rust is saturated, so I can actually pull out some of the orange of the rust by clicking and pulling down on the saturation. Um, I think it was fine how it was, so I'm going to just double click. Again, all you have to do is double click and it'll set everything back to how you like. If for whatever reason you're working in grayscale, um, let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab an image that we can work with in grayscale. Let's say this wheelbarrow here, which is a uh, sculpture out in our sculpture garden. I'm going to go back up to my basic. I'm going to convert it to black and white real quick. I might add a little clarity to give it a little punch. Um, nah, I don't think I need any dehaze. Uh, we've got a pretty good histogram up here where I've got a full range of tones from my, my shadows to my highlights. I'm going to jump back into my HSL and you'll actually see it has changed. It's now a black and white mix. And what's cool about this is let's say uh, I want to adjust things that were that used to be blue. I can grab my targeted slider and I can lift this up and now I'm lightening the value of all the blues in my image. Another thing I could do is maybe lighten the rust a little bit. So if I click here and I can I can pull out some of that detail in that rust just by lifting that up and that's, you can see that's affecting the reds and oranges present in the image. Uh, even though it's in black and white, the color information is still there. So that's a really handy tool if you're working in black and white. Now from here down, we start getting into some, some really kind of artistic or really techy adjustments. Your split toning would be how you might want to sepia tone something. So just to give you an example, I lift my hues into this sort of brown area and then I increase my saturation and I'm starting to get a sepia tone image here with this wheelbarrow. Maybe it's a little green so maybe I'll warm it up a little bit so it's a little more, more sepia. So pretty quickly I'm able to make this adjustment. And these are all non-destructive. And what's important about that is if I ever want to go back to this file as it was, 
I can jump over here to my history. These are, these are all the adjustments I did on this file. And I can take it all the way back to my original import, to where I converted it to black and white. And it's basically keeping track of everything that I've done. So I basically have a running uh, list of all of my adjustments. So um, that's a really handy tool that's un underneath your snapshots and your presets. That's your history there. All right. Um, moving right along, we also have some sharpening available. So if you wanted your image to be printed on a matte paper, maybe you want to sharpen it a little bit more. Uh, maybe you have a really noisy image, which means the grain in the image. So you can see how I've got some grain in this image here. I can use my noise reduction to soften the noise. Uh, if you ever soften the noise, it's a good idea to add some sharpening because it does blur it out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just increase my sharpening just a little bit and I'm being able to get a little bit crisper uh, fibers on this handle here. Some weird stuff's happening out here, so maybe I overdid that. So I'll just back it off a little bit. And you know, maybe I want a little bit of noise because sometimes that does help the colors blend into one another. So, you know, it's all preference, but you want to be careful not to overdo anything. Lens corrections, these are where you can actually enable corrections for your camera lens. Transform, this allows you to correct perspective. So let me jump into my transform here and I'll show you an example where you might use that. Here is our synagogue that we have here on campus and I'll go ahead and, and zoom out. There you go. So I shot this pretty straight, but if for whatever reason I was worried about the horizontals being straight or the verticals, what I would do is I could click full and it would try to compensate for that and correct all of my horizontals and verticals. If I click on vertical, it'll favor the vertical axes, and if I hit level, it'll favor the horizontal ones. And basically that just makes a subtle adjustment to the image so that it's nice and square. This image here is clearly shot off kilter. Let me go ahead and level this. There we go. Instantly level. And lastly, we have effects. And this is where you can add a post crop vignette. So I can darken the edges here. Um, I can adjust, I can push in my, where my focal point wants to be. I can make it all dreamy. Don't do that. <laughs> it's a little, little, little overdone. And then you can also add a level of grain. So if let's say we want to make this look like it was shot on 35 millimeter film, I'll convert it to black and white. I'll add some clarity and maybe a little bit of dehaze. And then I'm gonna jump back into my effects and add just a little bit of grain. And let's zoom in and see what we got here. So you can really see this grain. Let me pull it out. That's what it looked like before. I'm gonna start adding some grain and that looks more like 35 millimeter grain. And you can increase the size of the roughness. And then lastly, calibration. This is where if you really wanna get into some custom color calibration and have a profile set for your camera, you can go in here and adjust all this, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. So that's the essentials in the develop modules in Lightroom. Let's say that we really like this image and we're gonna go ahead and export it out. So what we're gonna do is we're going to back to my library and now I need to make this an image. These are all raw files, so that means that they need to be cooked or processed and made into an actual image file. I'm going to go up here to File. I'm going to Export. I could also use the little button down here. All right, so we'll name this Expression Wall because that's what we call this area on campus. And what we'll do is we'll add a sequence number in case I want to process out more. So that'll say expression wall number one, done. And then lastly, I'm gonna choose my file format. We're gonna do JPEG. Uh, we'll go ahead and bring up the quality. We'll leave it in sRGB. We'll say we're gonna put this on the internet or we're going to maybe send it off somewhere to print that only takes sRGB. Uh, we'll upsize it to 300 pixels per inch. So it'll take the, the resolution, but then divide up the pixels by 300. And then let's go ahead, I'll leave all the rest of this. You could add a watermark if you want to, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and export. We've got our folder called edits, and here it is, our final image ready to show.
We have the project file on hand for you to download right now. Check out the link on our website or in the YouTube description to rewatch and follow along. Thanks for watching.